Okay, uh, uh, this is student Dave again, and here we are looking at the MATLAB implementation of an it recursive Bayesian estimation. I'm adapting this from uh, Michael Goodrich's uh, website, and I'll give you that link, and I'll give you this code, and you could go ahead and uh, mess around things as you want. But here we're going to basically implement um, a hundred iteration of the squawks, and we're going to center the um, the uh, quail at the position 3, 5, okay? And the reason 100 is just to really tease out and see how this um, estimation goes over time. And the way you're going to basically implement the data that the uh, ninja receives is going to be creating this random noise around with the uh, standard deviation of 2, random noise around the position of actually where the quail is at. So here's the random noise, and then we're going to um, center it at the point where the uh, quail actually is, and we could take a look at the data. So here's the data. This is where the quail actually is, and here's the first data point that the ninja hears. So the ninja hears this. The quail's here, but the ninja doesn't know it. And he hears this, and this is the location where he hears the quail at, but it's not where he believes the quail's at. Remember, the estimate, we're building over a sum of all these things over time. Uh, but this is the actual data point where the ninja goes, oh, I heard the quail here. And so then he hears them here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, a hundred times. Okay, then what we're going to do is, uh, so th that's what the data is going to be. So first thing we need to do uh, is define the state space. And so basically, like I said, it's a matrices in two dimensions, and we're going to enumerate it to take on a, a range of values between 2 and 4 and 4 and 6 around that 3 and 5 position where the quail is at, and then we, we add some um, resolution to it, uh, 0.05. Then what we're going to do is define our prior. Now our prior is going to basically be a distribution of points along this matrices, of, of values along this matrices. And if we take a look at it, imagine this is the bushes. These are the bushes, and this is basically from 2 to 4, and then basically the quail is going to be somewhere here in the middle. And here's our probability. This is our prior probability, and in this case we're given a uniform distribution. The area under here will sum to 1, but each value is the same as each other. They're each equally likely positions for the quail to be at, and that's our prior. Um, then there's these other parts of the code, basically just to you know make things look a little bit prettier and plot out the maximum value. Because again, the maximum value in the estimate is going to be the most likely position of where the quail is at, and so we're just going to plot that as well. The real important thing is here the likelihood function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each um, new data point. So for each data point we go through, this is what the force four is for. And then we're going to store in the posterior distribution into the prior distribution, and we're going to iteratively do that. So every time we calculate a posterior, we then store it back to the prior and run it again. So this is the iteration part, and then this is the um, uh, the likelihood estimate. Now the way this works is that you go to each, for every single data point of where he hears the quail, we're going to go to every point in the states, of all possible states, and say, if that particular state was in fact where the quail is at, and we assume this Gaussian, uh, two-dimensional Gaussian noise, what is the likelihood of hearing that one data point? And so say, you know, we think that, we, we look at this one position and assume this position is where the quail is at, and we in fact, the data point was way out here, well that's way outside on that Gaussian distribution, so it's a very unlikely one, whereas a point closer here would be more likely. And basically just by calculating out from the uh, multivariate Gaussian uh, formula, uh, centered at each uh, state position, we could calculate the likelihood of each of that uh, particular signal, or that particular quail, uh, quail squawk. Then what we do is we multiply that result, so this is that result, we're going to multiply that result by the prior at that position. So for every state position, we're going to calculate what is the probability of getting that one data point at that position, if you assume a two-dimensional Gaussian noise there, and then multiply that by the prior, and we get our uh, almost posterior. Now remember, we can't, uh, it's not truly a probability distribution because it's not uh, summing to one, and because uh, we can't really estimate the probability of a squawk per se, you actually can just normalize it by the uh, overall area. And then we'll iterate and take a look at this. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we see here is this is the posterior distribution, and the coloring indicates which uh, which states are more probable, which positions. So remember, this is a plot of the bushes, and in fact, the quail is kind of like right around here. And this is a plot, now remember, 3, 5 is the position, and this is a plot of the maximum value, and we're going to see how that position, how that value evolves over uh, every new stimulus, or every new um, squawk. And so here it's moving. 
you can see it moving and notice how the distribution starts to tighten up a little bit first we're kind of off and now it starts to move over you can see these values starting to move a little bit and starts to move starts to move and you notice it starts to tighten up and, and that's the kind of idea is that the estimate didn't work out perfectly here but you can see that it starts to tighten up here watch we're running again run the whole thing again first we're going to plot out all the ninja points and now if we take a look at it we can watch how the estimate moves again again here it's pretty noisy to start off with and then it starts to center up right around um, where the true position of the quail is at I actually kind of already found it and then you see the variance start to drop down then it becomes more and more likely position of where the quail is at okay and so that that's uh, one example. So this is an example where we have a plot, uh, a flat, a uniform prior distribution. But let's change our prior. Let's go ahead and now um, let's change our prior. And in this case, let's make the prior um, have a nicely centered prior. And this is the the power of Bayesian right now. We have a nice nicely centered prior. So this is, for example, if we have a prior that looks like this, rather than this, uh, like we said, uniform, but if we actually have a prior estimation that of, in fact, where the quail actually is, so for some reason we know where the quail tends to be and is probably there, if we have this prior expectation, let's look at how, see how this signal evolves. And you can notice almost immediately, if you look at these plots, we're very close, we're almost there already. And so with that prior knowledge, within a very few um, data points we're able to confirm that in fact the quail is right there and you can see it tightens up very quickly the variance uh, starts to drop out and so with a good prior you could very quickly um, arrive at your uh, goal estimate but let's say now that we don't have a good prior let's just say in fact we have a prior that's not uniform but it's biased in the wrong direction so let's take a look at that See, and say, let's say, this is say our priors here, that we have, for some reason, um, someone told us that, or some other ninja that doesn't like us, says, oh, yeah, the quail is probably over here. And let's see what happens to the, uh, the distribution over time with this kind of uh, funky prior. Now, you can see we're already biased. We're starting off way over here. And you can kind of see that there's resistance, that in this dimension it's doing all right but there's some real resistance to moving away from that position because remember it was a strong prior and slowly slowly it's still fighting it and you, basically the point here is showing that the uh, a bad prior that's very strong is going to really make it hard for you to find the true uh, value of uh, the true state of the world and so that's that's the whole point here so you could take this code and mess around with it and change these values as you want you know maybe change how tight the prior is or how broad it is but the idea is that the shape of the prior distribution can drastically affect how quickly you'll arrive at your final uh, state estimation and it's in general can be very useful if it's defined well okay uh, that's it for this and we'll move on to things like uh, Markov decision process in the next series